Welcome to this episode of Quilt 101. Today we are going to be going over the gingham pattern, so stay tuned. So when you get your kit in the mail, Quilt 101, we're going to show you what you get first. So you'll have your pattern. You will have the backing of your choice. You will have the binding of your choice. Already cut into two and a half inch strips. Already cut and you'll have this little stack of four and a half inch squares. Yep. So the first thing you're gonna do is separate them into um, fabrics A, B, and C. A is the lightest, B is the medium, and C is the darkest. Yep. So when you follow through the instructions, it's gonna tell you to create sets. Um, so the first row, so this is actually a baby size. So the first row, this I'm kind of holding this backwards for me, but this is row one. So it's light, it's fabric A and fabric B. And you're going to make four sets. So one set, two set, three set, four sets. So Emily's yep. going to start sewing and she's going to sew the sets and then we'll come on back. It's not really necessary to pin these unless you feel a little uncomfortable. You just want to make sure that the squares are squared up, that it's not wonky, that it's, it's yeah. truly squared up. And then do your quarter inch seam. And we just put a piece of washi tape here just to help us follow that quarter inch. Now also, just a note, um, it says in the pattern also, but there is an, um, an uneven amount of squares that make up the row. So the last block in each row you'll actually sew separately. And I think I'm just going to do that. I think I'm just going to do that now. Okay. So I'll just take one extra of the white and add it to the end of just one of the sets. That way it's already added on. All right. So after you get your set sewn, I always like to lay things back out just to make sure I've got it right. So it's going to be the white first and then the gray. So we're just going to sew these sets together. And this is the one that's on the end. Yep. So we're just going to flip it over and sew a quarter inch. Right sides together. Don't forget that. Then I'm just going to get this one ready for so I'm going to flip this over and we're going to sew that. There you go. And I always lay it back out because I have sewn things together wrong. <laughs> Uh, ripping <laughs> seems is the worst. The All worst. Right, so that's looking good. So we're going to fold it over. And this will be row number one done. And then while I sew this, do you want to tell them about those pins? Makes it yep. nice. So when you, when you have your rows laid out, and I usually use the floor. So when it's laid out on the floor, you've got your rows sewn together. Let's actually pull, let's see, let me grab this other little stack right here. Can you pick those up for me? It's so nice to have assistance to help one another. Okay, so this is row one. This would be row two. So the next step would be to sew the rows together. And just imagine that there's however many rows we need coming down. Something that I, somebody taught me that has really helped me in sewing rows together yeah. is on the first, the, golly, I have to turn myself around. The left, <laughs> the left hand side, yeah. <laughs> the top corner, you want to mark the number of the row. So we have these handy dandy little pins that we love and we'll have those available. But also just a regular pin 
And for years, I would just cut little pieces of paper and label them one, two, three, four, however, however many rows you need. And I would just pin that piece of paper up in the corner. Yeah. But so you'll have however many rows going down. Um, it just helps keep everything lined up mm -hmm. because if you twist one row in some patterns, it messes up everything. Yeah. And I hate ripping seams out. That is my least favorite thing. So it prevents that. Um, so this way you actually will take it from here. You'll take it to the ironing board. So the other trick you got to remember in it, these pins help whenever you have an odd number. So this is row one. When you iron, you start at the, the one and you iron this way. So hold, you kind of hold it up at a right angle. And so that way you press the, I forgot what the word was again. Seam. <laughs> Forgetting Seam allowance. Word. You press the seam, and so it folds that way, and so it'll so create a nice So all the seams crease. will be going this yes. way. And then but row two, you do the opposite, and so you start on this end, so the, um, the end that doesn't have the pin in it, you start on this end, and you press this way. And we'll take this to the ironing board right now and show you kind of what we mean and why it is important. Okay, so now that we're at the ironing station, so starting off with number one, and remember for the odd number rows, you sew starting with where the pin is at. So I'm gonna take my hot iron, and then I'm gonna hold these up at a 90 degree angle, so that way whenever I iron over it, it gives it a nice crease. Then I'm just gonna keep going down the row, just like that. And then once row one is done, then um, you can just move down. So here's row two. Thanks, Mom. You're welcome. So row two is the opposite. So on even number rows, you iron or you start pressing on the opposite side of the pin. And so the pin, the number two is right here, right? So we are going to start ironing on this side. And for me, because I'm right-handed, it's easier for me just to flip it. Um, but just remember, you start pressing on the side that doesn't have the pin for the even rows. So going here, 90 degree angle, and I'm just gonna keep pressing, making sure, making sure that those seams are nice and crisp, because that is what will make your end result um, really nice. I'm a perfectionist. That one went the wrong way. Oh, thank you, Mom. <laughs> That's so nice of you. Okay, so now let me show you why pressing seams um, in a particular way is important. So here is row one. Um, so eventually we are going, or well, next we are going to flip these right sides together and we're going to sew along here. But if you can tell, because the seams are ironed, in opposite directions, whenever you go to match up the seams, they nest into each other. And so it gives you basically a foolproof way of always having super crisp lines that intersect perfectly. And so that is why, um, yeah, it's so important to iron it that way because, I mean, you can feel it. Like if you, whenever you line these up, like you can feel them nestling into each other and that's what you want. It just makes it flat instead yeah. of having a lot of bulk when you have a finished quilt. Yeah, yeah. So we're gonna take this back over to the ironing board, or not the ironing board, to the sewing machine. We're gonna just sew up this row for you, show you a little bit more about how to nest them together. Um, so I'll just hand this over to my mom, I guess, so you could do that. All right, so now we're here at the machine and we want to um, sew the rows together. So ideally, what you need to do is pin each seam. So remember how Emily showed you how they nest? Well, you want to nest those together so they're nice and flat. And just put a pin right in there. And you're gonna do that at, at, at each seam where they connect. That will definitely 
help in the sewing process. All right, and once those are pinned, you're just gonna sew them together. Remember to keep that quarter inch. When you get to the pin, just stop and take it out. Oopsie, just double check. Make sure that they stay the way you want them to. Sometimes when they run over the little plate on your sewing machine, it sometimes will flip that seam. And you can feel immediately if it's flipped or not, which all these are for some reason. Sometimes a little, little slobber on your fingers helps pull the edges together. All right, so I'm gonna hand this back over to Emily and she can show you the finishing ironing. So now that we have the two rows sewed together, we just need to press them. And so I always start um, just by lightly going over the seam. That's called setting the seam. Yeah. It just helps the thread. It actually kind of sinks it down in the fabric a little bit. Just makes it the finishing. It just makes it finish. Yeah, nicer. it's not quite as much bulk when you flip it. And then once again, we're going, well, we're going to iron to, um, so the seam is on the dark side, so you don't see it poking through all of the light fabrics. So to seam to the, to, um, sorry, to sew the seam to the dark side, you're going to start with the light, and then you're going to bring up the dark, and then you're just going to iron over it that way. And then you're just going to continue this on the entire row until it's nice and flat and beautiful. And then once this is done, we are just going to attach this. We've actually have gone ahead and made the rest of the made the rest of the quilt and so but we're just um got to attach these last two rows on it and then we'll show you the finished quilt top all righty so remember the rows are going to be numbered so we left the number three up here because this row has an unfinished edge so we've got the one this is two and that's three so those numbers really help in just keeping everything lined up so we're just going to flip this over, take out that number three, and then we're just going to sew this up. And voila, the finished quilt top for, this is the baby size kingdom. Um, and so now as soon as you are done with the top, you can go ahead and sandwich the quilt and then you quilt it and then you trim it and then you put the binding on and so you're almost done. But I just wanted to show you a couple of different quilting options you can do with this pattern. I love it, like I love quilting these type of quilts because they're already pretty geometric and so there's lots of good like intersecting points and so you can do fun quilting. So you can see with this teal one, how we quilted it like going through like we almost made an X in the middle of each square. Now for that one too we just took a big yardstick yeah and we just did it diagonal. Traced it. Yep you just you just trace your line with um, we have these disappearing um, ink pens yeah so you it the ink comes out really well and you iron it off um, so you basically do the lines and you just follow it with your machine. It's yeah. pretty easy. And then you can see like here's the pinking them. So on this one we just went a quarter inch on each. Like we just follow this one we didn't even have to mark. We just used the seam to um, 
we just followed that. And for, for that, you use your um, sewing foot. Yeah. So the, the foot that goes, you know, how do you explain a foot? The sewing foot. <laughs> Whatever. I don't know what she's talking about. <laughs> anyway, you'll you'll just use that as your guide. So yeah. you'll you'll run the seam in the middle of the foot and then it or the edge of the thing on the seam. That was really messed up. It's okay. We love <laughs> you so anyways, sorry. Mom. We love you anyways. I'm really confusing so if you everybody. Can see in here, this is this this is a similar thing. And so we just um, followed the seam um, a quarter inch on each side to quilt it. And so just wanted to show you a couple um, a couple ways you can quilt it. Okay, you know. wait, let me, let me just make my mistake right. So when you're quilting it, I'm just going to show you real quick, just so you understand, because this makes it easy and it makes it doable for you. So you have your sewing foot that goes on the bottom right here. So you actually would line up the seam. I don't know if you may do it on this side. The on, the, on the seam would go on the edge of the foot. So that will keep it a consistent uh, measurement away from the seam that gives you that straight line. Yeah. That's what I was trying to explain. Oh, thank you, Mom. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> Couldn't quite do it at the moment. All right. Well, that's pretty much it. So I hope you guys give this quilt a try. It's, uh, I mean, I would call this a beginner quilt as well. I mean, it's... Um, you know, I think a beginner could definitely do this and have a lot of success with it. So we are excited to see your finished products. Happy quilting.